Hey guys, AJ Casada here, co-founder of Revenue Boost, and today you're going to learn the real reason why any marketing campaign on any platform succeeds or flops. And it's not what you think. It's not the platform you choose, right? You can't just blame Facebook and Facebook ads don't work. It's not the tool, it's not the tactic, it's not the software. It's actually three reasons, three what I call hidden forces as to why any marketing campaign succeeds or flops. And when you learn this, when you learn what these are, you're going to have the ability to troubleshoot any single marketing or sales thing you ever do, any activity, any campaign, you're gonna be able to troubleshoot and know, okay, if it didn't work, it's only one of these three things, how can I fix it, right? And if it did work, you know exactly you know, what you have going well and how you can double down next time. So really excited about this because this is gonna be illuminating for a lot of you. It's gonna help make a lot of sense for why any campaigns in the past didn't work, why maybe what you're doing right now isn't working as well as you'd like it to, and how you can absolutely crush all of your marketing efforts in the future when you know these three things. And this is a recording from a live I did recently in our Facebook community. If you're not in there, get there so that you can get this content first and actually join me live to ask questions. The link is below to B2B Sales Marketing Secrets. And if you're loving the channel, please do me a favor and smash that subscribe button so you can see new videos I post every single week on how to scale an agency and B2B business. All right, enjoy. Welcome everyone to another episode of How to Scale an Agency. Here with a quick episode today to walk through the real reason why your marketing campaign, why any marketing campaign in any niche either succeeds or fails, right? So if you're sitting there, you know, you're tinkering around with Facebook ads, cold email, LinkedIn, whatever it is you do, and you're trying to get your campaigns to work better, you're trying to get more leads, trying to get more sales. Most people I find are looking in the wrong place, right? Most people, the, the real reason they think their marketing campaigns are working or not is not always the actual reason, right? Most people resort to the tactics, right? Like the, the softwares I'm using, the, the, the channels I'm using, is, is it Facebook ads, is it LinkedIn? you know, different tricks that they learn online, different formats for the creative. But really what it is, is these three things, which I'm going to share my screen, I have a quick little presentation to show you guys. This is going to be really illuminating for a lot of you, because I think by the end of this, you guys are going to have a clear picture for like, okay, that's why this hasn't been working, right? Or why, why something has worked, right? So what we're going to talk about today is the NOM framework, right? And this is really the foundations of your business. So today you're going to learn what makes the difference between a truly successful campaign. And again, it's not what you think. And really, I look at these as the hidden forces that set you up to win or lose, right? So like, it's it's what happens before you launch a marketing campaign that determines whether it works or not. So it's really more like you're set up for success or failure right from the very start, whether you know it or not. And ultimately, this is what allows an entrepreneur to be successful in many different industries, right? I, I was always impressed by entrepreneurs who, you know, people like Richard Branson, right? They have like a hundred different companies and they can just be successful with like whatever they do, right? And it's because they understand these three factors, right? And at the end of the day, you know, I'm a big believer in principles and foundations and fundamentals. I think our whole, like the whole industry, whole business world, the whole marketing world, everyone's so obsessed with tactics, right? The latest software tools, the latest like templates for, you know, ad copy, different, different channels, different platforms. And most people are, are obsessed with these things that are shiny, but really it's these boring principles that I'm going to walk you through the, the NOM framework that determine what works, right? So it's all about principles over tactics. It's all about strategy over tactics. Because at the end of the day, when you just chase like the latest and greatest tactics, you won't be able to really create repeatable success, right? Because what happens is you're just kind of copying, like you're jumping on the latest trend, you're copying what other people are doing, but you're not actually building something that you deeply understand and then you can replicate that success for the next campaign and the next campaign and the next campaign, right? So when you look at what are the principles underneath marketing, what are like the first principles that make marketing work? then you know how to just make anything you work, anything you touch just turn to gold over time. So it's really exciting. Again, it's what happens before the battle that wins the battle. It's what goes on underneath the surface and it's mastering the fundamentals and learning the core principles of what you're doing. And the cool thing is no one can take that away, right? It has permanence, right? Tried and true principles never change. That's why whenever I'm learning anything, whether it's something in my business or even a hobby in my personal life, I always like to understand the first principles. What really makes up this thing on its core? And that's how you create lasting success and get to learn something quick. It's just like health, right? You know, you could look online and you could get over, when you look up like how to get healthy, you could get overwhelmed by all the different diets and workout styles. I mean, now, nowadays there's like a new workout concept popping up every week, basically, right? So there's all these different diets, all these different workout regimens, all these different, you know, crazy things you'll hear online people are doing to, to test with their health. But at the end of the day, if everyone in the world just slept eight hours of good quality sleep, ate healthy, drank more water, exercise three, four times a week, everybody would be so much healthier, right? So a lot of people that are looking into all these crazy fad diets or like interesting, you know, exotic workout routines, most people aren't even just doing the basics right. And if you just do the basics right, you'll be healthier than 90% of people, right? So it's always about these first principles, right? Now think about, let me give you a, just a quick, a quick analogy. Imagine you're playing basketball, right? Imagine you have the option to either play 
Michael Jordan, or you're going to play a game against your little niece or nephew, like someone who's five years old, right? And you're going to win money if you play the game. Who would you choose? Well, obviously, you're probably better off playing against a five-year-old if you're trying to win a basketball game versus trying to play against Michael Jordan, right? This is an example of how in business, in marketing, it's about playing the right game, right? So these principles that I'm going to show you, it's about playing the right game. And it's about knowing like you choose the game you play before you even start. So sometimes you don't need to just learn how to play the game better, which is, you know, trying new tactics, optimizing what you're doing. Sometimes rather than learning how to play the game better, you might just need to be playing a different game. And that's exactly what we're talking about here with the NOM framework, which stands for niche offer and message. Again, there's no hack or quick trick for success. There's, of course, tips, tricks, and tactics that help you along the way, but these do not really create success, right? They just help accelerate it. But success comes from getting these underlying principles and foundations and fundamentals correct. And overall, like, I, you know, I always wondered, why do people gravitate towards the tactics or shiny objects? Why do I gravitate towards the tactics or shiny objects, right? You know, if you think about it, like, we, we all look for these things like, like life hacks, right? You know, you can look at any niche and there'll just be a list of, like, life hacks or, you know, that's, like, one of the most popular blog articles or blog titles, right? It's, like... 10, 10 quick hacks, 10 quick tricks to do X, Y, Z. You see it everywhere, right? And it's really because it feeds on kind of our short-term gratification and, and the fact that we're looking for shortcuts. And that's what I believe, at least, is that most people were just looking for these shortcuts, right? And that's what everyone's selling to us. But again, you know, all the tips, tricks, hacks, shortcuts in the world, they're not going to really help you create lasting success. And again, mastering principles, fundamentals, they take time and they have delayed gratification. And they can also be sometimes abstract and intangible, just like niche offer and message, which I'll dive into in a minute here. And our brain doesn't always like things that are abstract or intangible. And really, like it requires thinking, which is harder work than the actual work. The success of your marketing growth efforts will be heavily dependent on the fundamentals of your business to begin with and the principles that support that marketing campaign. And this is why a lot of people will say, oh, I've tried everything. It didn't work. I tried Facebook ads. It didn't work. I tried YouTube. It didn't work. I tried TikTok. It didn't work. The platform always works. It's what you put in the platform, right? And also, this is why sometimes someone will use someone else's template. Like they'll, they'll rip off someone else's funnel or they'll try to copy someone else's business model or offer. And it won't work or it'll work for a short time, but then they can't get it to last. They can't repeat it because they didn't understand why it worked in the first place. Right. That's why principles are so important. So what is the NOM framework? What are the principles? What are the underlying factors that make or break any marketing campaign or business? It's the who, the what, and the why, which is your niche, your offer, and your messaging. If you just get these three things right for your business, everything gets easier. Any marketing channel, any marketing project, growth project that you launch it's going to work a thousand times better than before. So it's about having the right niche, the right offer, and the right messaging. Think about this, what, what actually is your business? When I ask most entrepreneurs what they do, most of them have a hard time explaining it. They have a hard time explaining it to begin with, and it's like fumbling and it's different every time. But think about it, what do you actually do and who do you do it for, right? What are you really selling to who and why should they care? So when I think about niche offer message, the who is the niche, the what is the offer, and the why is the message, the, the words you're using to communicate why this matters to them, why they should care, right? So that's how I like to think about my business in its very simplest form, right? Again, a lot of entrepreneurs, they go out marketing, selling, and delivering without really being strategic and thoughtful and being clear about these things. And you can just tell because, again, ask any entrepreneur, what do they do? The majority of them will have a hard time explaining it or they'll give this, they'll give this like long convoluted explanation. And that means that they're not really clear on what they're selling, who they're selling to, and why that matters, why that person should care, right? The niche, the offer, the messaging. And here's the thing, if you're not clear, if you're not really clear on these key components of your business, then how are your customers gonna be clear, right? If you're not clear and then you go out and you try to sell someone or you go out to try to write an ad or write a cold email, then that's not gonna be clear. The person's gonna be even less clear than you, right? So it's really important to get these things down. And uh, yeah, it's all about direction over speed, right? So, you know, a lot of people, they just think more volume is gonna help. And of course, more volume, like more leads is gonna get you farther. But what we're talking about here with niche offer messaging, it reminds me of, you know, a principle I learned a long time ago, which is that direction is more important than speed. So speed is like more volume, doing more, trying different tips and hacks and tactics, right? You know, trying the latest and greatest software tools, whatever it is. But direction is, you know, who am I selling? What exactly am I selling? What's my offer? And what is the messaging positioning I'm using to communicate that? How am I differentiating myself in the marketplace, right? So these things could put you in the right direction, which just means everything is going to be easier for you. So again, you need these three things to win in any business with any marketing campaign. You need the right people, which is the niche. You need an irresistible offer to sell them, which is the offer. And you need an attractive message to connect it to, which is the messaging. So it's niche, offer, and messaging. So whenever you're thinking about, you know, why can't you get more clients? Why can't you get more leads? Why did that campaign we launched not work? It's because of one of these three things. At the end of the day, the channels you're using are an afterthought. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, offline ads, events, whatever it is. 
all of these things are just mediums. They're just mechanisms to deliver your message and your offer to the niche. That's how I like to think about it, right? So it's, you know, it's, it's silly to say, oh, I tried Facebook ads, it didn't work. Meanwhile, it's probably working for someone else in your industry. It's just, you didn't have the niche offer message formula down, right? There's one of these, one of these three that wasn't in place. So let's talk about what happens when one of the, you know, one of these three things is not in place, right? Because you need all three. If you have the right, if you have an attractive offer and you have good messaging, but you're in the wrong niche, then you're screwed from the very start, right? You could have the best, an example of this would be like if you're selling meat to a vegan, right? You could have the best steaks in the world, but at the end of the day, it's falling on deaf ears because that's not the right niche for you, right? And it might sound obvious, but a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of agency owners especially, really don't have this down. They have a great offer, they have a great message, but they don't realize it that they're working with the wrong clients, right? They're work, they're, there's other clients or other industries or other market segments out there that might be way, way more likely to say yes to your offer and you just haven't found them yet, right? So sometimes making a slight change in niche could be the best thing for you. And now if you have the other two, right, if you have a great, if you're in the right niche, you're in a great market for what you do and you have great messaging, like you have great copy and, you, and your, your ability to persuade is on point and you know the pain points and the desires of your target market, but you don't have the right offer. Well, what'll happen there is you'll be able to get conversations started. You'll be able to get responses, clicks, leads, appointments, but when it comes time to sell, people are not going to buy, right? So when you have the niche and the message down, you'll get conversations going, but you'll have a hard time closing and scaling. And then it's going to cost you way more in marketing to actually get people to buy than it has to, right? So your customer acquisition costs will go through the roof. Now, what if you have the other two? What if you have the right niche? What if you're selling to the absolute best market for what you sell, right? What if you're in a market that's, you know, they have the money, they have the problem, they're looking for the solution, they can afford it, right? And they're easy to reach, but you have the wrong messaging and you have the right offer. Meaning, okay, I'm in the right market. And I have a great product or service for them. I have an irresistible offer, but you have the wrong messaging. Well, then in that case, you're never going to connect with the niche in the first place. In that case, the conversation's not really going to get started. Or you'll get people to hop on sales calls and be like, this is kind of cool, but I need to think about it. I'm not sure, right? That's often a sign that the messaging wasn't in place or wasn't effective. Now I'm going to explain just real quick what messaging is, because there's a lot of words thrown around in marketing, like copywriting, messaging, positioning. What are the differences between these three? So first of all, messaging is really like the ways that you explain your offer to your niche and the way that you do that everywhere, right? An example of messaging would be like an elevator pitch, but there's other frameworks beyond just the elevator pitch. But the whole idea with messaging is that you, you should have a standard way of explaining what you do and its benefits, no matter where you're selling, whether it's online, offline, you're writing an ad, writing an email, whatever it is. This is like the foundational work where you actually sit through and you, and you just really brainstorm like, what are the problems I solve? What are the reasons these prospects should care about that problem? What are the solutions I have for them? Why do those solutions matter? What is the outcome that it provides them at the end of the day, right? That's message. Imagine you have a cake, right? Copywriting is the actual cake. That's the end product, right? So the words you're putting on an ad or on a landing page or on a pitch deck, that's the copywriting, right? But the copywriting stems from the messaging. The messaging is this one-off work you do to develop like what are the key phrases and the key words I'm using when I'm explaining my offer to anybody anywhere, right? So this should be defined. A good test for this is when people ask you what you do, let's say you're at a conference. Let's say you're at a conference and you know you meet like 20 people and all 20 of them throughout the conference ask you like, okay, cool. So what do you do? If you give them a different explanation every time, that's how you know you have a messaging problem. When people ask you, what do you do? You should be giving them pretty much the same explanation. And it should just be like automatic. It should just be like sharp, right? You shouldn't just be coming up with that off the top of your head. A good test that your messaging needs work is that you know you have an incredible offer, you know you're in the right niche, but something's not clicking, it's usually a messaging problem. And another real life example of that is if you have to, if you explain yourself differently when different people ask you what you do, that's how you know you don't have really clear, cohesive messaging. So again, you have to nail the who, the what, and the why. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what platform you use, it doesn't matter whose funnel you use, what template you use, what software you're using, none of that matters, that's all a gravy, right? None of that matters if you don't have your who, your what, and your why, your N, your O, your M, your niche, your offer, and your messaging. Really, really important. Again, you need these three things to win with any marketing endeavor. The right people, the niche, an irresistible offer to sell them, the offer, and an attractive message to communicate the value, messaging. And that's how you can win the battle before it starts, right? That's how you can, remember the example before with basketball? Are you more likely to win a game playing Michael Jordan or your cousin? That's an example of choosing the right game to be in, right? And just winning the battle before it starts by creating better conditions for success. Because at the end of the day, you know, if, if you have, if you're in a niche that it's a really uphill battle, like the niche just, you know, isn't that interested in your offer, then it, everything's going to be uphill. And even if you're the best salesperson in the world, you have the best marketing team in the world, the best customer service, the best product in the world, everything is just going to be so much harder because you're going against the grain. So you want to be going with the grain and you do that by trying to align niche offer message. 
And it's a process of experimenting, right? So I would say, you know, this kind of depends on where you're at in the stage of your business. If you're in the first couple of years of your agency, you're still trying to figure out what you're doing. It's okay to experiment a little bit, right? I always tell people like, if you're just getting started with your business, it's totally fine to experiment and, you know, serve different markets, have different offers, as long as it's just that an experiment, right? Because the goal is to get to one niche, one offer and one key message. And when you have that, then you just try to get that everywhere and you just rinse and repeat. And at that point, you just need more attention, right? At the end of the day, you need to have all those three down. And if you don't really know like who your best clients are, if you don't really know what the most irresistible offer you can sell them is, it's fine. Now, you know, at least where you need to start looking, you need to get to work on figuring that out. And a lot of time you figure that out through experimentation, right? So if you've been in business for a while, look back at your last, like do a client audit, right? Look back at all your clients. Let's say you've served 50 clients over the lifetime of your business, right? Or hundred, whatever. Analyze them and rank them in order of like, who was the best client to work with? Who made you the most money? Not revenue, but profit. Who, who had you, who left you with the most profit? Who left you with the least headaches? Who was just easy to deliver? And who was someone that you really just enjoyed working with? And also they were easier to sell. So those four things, right? If you want to really dive into the past to, to essentially create your future here and create a new strategy going forward, look at all the past products you've done and just rank it on those four factors, right? Who was easy to sell in the first place, right? Like they didn't have a lot of resistance or objections or they were just a little bit easier to get on board than other, other scenarios, right? Other people. Who was the most profitable, right? Who gave you the least headaches and who did you just enjoy working with, enjoy connecting with? Those four things will give you a really good answer on like what you should be selling into who. And the messaging is just working out, you know, the ins and outs of the pain points and the outcomes, right? But yeah, that's what I would do if you're looking to figure out what niche you should focus on. Because I think we've all heard this before. It's important to niche down. It's important to have an irresistible offer, but then it's like how, right? But this is how you do it by just experimenting and looking at this real life data. If you've been in business for a while, you have the luxury to look backwards and figure this out right from the start. If you're just starting a new business, you don't have that past data, but you can at least have this experimentation mindset and every few months do this analysis, do this audit, and you'll see like what the right combination of niche and offer messages. So again, it's all about winning the battle before it starts and setting her up for success. If you know Alex Ramosi, he tells the story a lot where the biggest thing that helped him skyrocket from being you know, stuck at seven figures to blasting off to like a hundred million and where he is now in, in just a short amount of time. The one thing he changed was he changed the vehicle. He changed the niche and the offer he was selling, right? And I'm not saying you need to change your whole business, right? Sometimes it could just be a slight shift, like maybe just going up market to bigger businesses or down market or just making a slight change in your offer. So it doesn't always have to be a whole makeover, but at the end of the day, you know, like that's, that's usually where you'll find the biggest gains, right? Is by adjusting these underlying principles of your business and being clear on who you sell, what you sell to them and why it matters, which is the messaging. I'll give you a, a quick lightning round of some fast tips for niche offer message. This was more of a quick, you know, video I wanted to make today, just talking about like what this really, what this really is, is at an overview level. I have tons of other content going really deep on niche and offer and messaging and positioning, but just to give you some quick lightning round tips for, you know, the three of them and how to, how to optimize the three. Okay. First of all, messaging, the two things you want to be clear on are what are the pain points you solve? Not just the problems, but the pain points, right? A problem is website conversions are low, right? That's a problem. What is the pain point? The pain point is the business owner feels stressed because they can't fix it or they feel worried because, you know, they're spending all this money on ads and a lot of it isn't converting and they're just sucking money out of their bank account, right? So they're already spending the money on traffic, but the traffic isn't converting. So that's getting to the pain point, right? It's what is the effect of the problem, right? You want to know the pain points of your offer, what you solve for your clients, and then also the outcomes, the results. That's different than benefits, right? Think about the benefit of the benefit. So if you have a service, in this case, you know, website optimization, conversion rate optimization in the example, what are the outcomes of that, right? So the service is website development and conversion rate optimization. The benefit is the conversion rate goes up. But what is the outcome of that? Well, I'd say more sales, but also more profitability because when you increase your conversion rate optimization, the profitability is going through the roof because you're essentially converting more of the leads you already have. So you're getting more sales without spending more as an example. But the point is you have to really get to the end benefit that's the two most important things you want to be clear on for your business messaging wise, right? What are the pain points that my clients have? And what is the outcome after I've served them? And the best way you can think about that is think about a client that you've worked with for a long time. Think about a really successful client. What happened all the way at the end? What do they tell you after the project, right? When you got a testimonial from them, what were they saying around how it made their life different going forward? So that's messaging. Niche, in terms of how to pick the best niche, again, go analyze the past and just rank each of the markets you've dealt with, each of the, type, the client types you've had. And by the way, niche isn't just industry. It's really just type of client, right? A, a niche could be like a business size. It could be a geography. It doesn't always have to be just industry. But go back and analyze the types of clients you had and just who are the best to work with on those four factors I shared before. And then offer, quick tip I'll give you around offers is turn your objections into offers. So whenever a prospect tells you no, or they don't sign with you, you should be trying to figure out why, because that information is gold. The reason someone doesn't buy for you 
is the key to making your offer more compelling and more irresistible. So for example, every time someone tells you on a sales call, I'm not interested in this, and they tell you why, you can actually make your offer better by putting that inside of your offer, right? So if you're always getting price objections, well, maybe I need to do something different. Maybe I need to make payment plans. Maybe we need to create a starter package, like a trial or a pilot or whatever it is. What just in that example, right? And then you'd eliminate price objections. So a lot of times we get objections in the sales process. We think that we need to be just better at sales, which surely helps. But also like you can actually just prevent a lot of those objections by making your offer better. But point being here is your offer development, like creating an irresistible offer doesn't just happen with you sitting in a room. It's basically, in my eyes, it's a collaborative exercise with your clients, right? Because your clients will tell you how to make your offer better. And when they tell you no, when they don't sign with you, they're giving you feedback on how you can improve your offer to their liking, right? So look at your offer as it's just iterative process and you're taking market feedback to make it better and better. And a lot of that goal happens in sales calls or in DMs or wherever you, wherever you chat with people. But those are some quick tips for niche offer messaging. If you like this, or if you want to go deeper on niche offer messaging, let me know. We have tons of trainings on each of the three of these. This to me, I could talk about it for days because it's so, so important. When I started Revenue Boost and we started helping agencies scale their business, I found that this was always the biggest problem, right? They would come to me with a service level problem, like, oh, my cold emails aren't working. I'm not getting leads. Or, oh, I can't close deals. I need a better sales script. I'd always get these surface level problems through consulting, right? And then I always realized it, like nine times out of 10, the problem was they didn't know who their, they didn't know who their best clients were. They didn't have an offer tailor-made for them and they didn't have their messaging down. They weren't clear on like why what they sell matters and the pain points and the outcomes associated with it. So really, really important stuff. And I encourage you guys to really obsess over this because it's a game-changing difference. And yeah, any questions, just let me know. I hope this helps you out and I'll see you guys soon.